can I find more people to sell to quickly without having to leave my desk? So basically mass selling. Um, I was all about the commission, completely driven by money. Um, I fell into social media by accident. I started selling mortgages to taxi drivers on Beagle. That's how long I'm in the industry. Um, I don't admit that very often, but that will give you an idea. Um, anything is possible um, when it comes to social media, certainly from a business point of view. I have worked with, I'm going to lose my presentation here, because I live my life online, I'm not very tech savvy. Um, but I have worked with a courier company for four and a half years as their sales marketing manager. And if you can make couriers attractive on social media, nobody has any excuse. You can sell courier services online, but nobody else has any excuse for not using it. So, um, why social media? Firstly, social media allows you to see what prospective customers are saying about your brand and your competitors. So it's no good just knowing what people are saying about your brand. If you understand what people are saying about your competitors, then you understand what their needs and musts are, and also what they're looking for, what they're not getting from the industry, and where you may be able to slot in and offer your services or products. Um, not only can social media assist you in generating new leads, it also allows you to build deeper relationships with existing clients that drive them to purchase again and again. For me, I'd say, well, firstly, I'll admit, at least 70% of my new business comes from my personal Twitter account. Um, at least. Um, I would completely pimp myself out on it. But if anyone looks through my, my timeline, you'll never once uh, see me talking about, like, buy from me. It's all about, it's all about the person and being the expert in your field. We'll go through that. Um, but, why social media again? So social media, it allows um, you to create dialogue with your potential clients. It allows you to build relationships with them. It allows you to listen to what it is that they're getting or not getting from you or your industry. It allows you to broadcast your news and information about your brand. Before you can start, you need to look at listening. What are you going to say? Um, where are you going to say it? Who are you saying it to? And then you've got your actual content, your news, events, uh, holidays, on-trend topics, writing out the, the trending topics, uh, reading back and off them. But also then you should have your own checklist. So your objectives, your target audience, the platforms you're going to use, how you're going to maintain um, your profile online, the content in which you're going to share, um, and how, most importantly, how you're going to measure it. So on that note, what I would say to you is, before you start anything on social media, you need to look at, look who's talking. And it's my motto in the office, I cannot drill it down enough. Look who's talking. So who are you talking to? And who's speaking back to you? Who's speaking to your competitors? What are they saying to your competitors? What are your competitors saying in return? What are your peers saying? What are the industry leaders in your field? What are they saying and who are they saying it to? So constantly, look who's talking. At least 50% of your con or at least 50% of social media is listening, and the other 50% then is speaking. It's like all good relationships. It's two-way traffic. It's about a relationship. It's not about followers. It's not about having a platform to spit and use information out there. Successful social media is a two-way thing, and it's about building a community, not building just an audience or a number of followers. So. Before you start then, you need to figure out who is it that you want to talk to. So, who are your competitors and your peers? Anyone? First off, how many people here use social media on a day-to-day -day basis for their business? Okay. How many people would know off the top of their head what kind of return on investment it's getting for them? Like I said, it might be at least 70%. Anyone? I've got like a computation. Um, how many people here use, monitor what their competitors are saying on social media? Okay. Um, how many people here use Twitter lists? Okay. I've seen a few familiar faces putting up their hands, which means I've, I've said this to them before. So, one of the easiest and sneakiest ways of following your competitors, without them knowing that you're following them, is to create Twitter lists. So if you create Twitter lists, you can add people to your list without directly following them, and then, at any stage, you can go in, and you're, I don't even look at my direct news feed, I follow 20 odd thousand people. I could never keep up to date with it at all. But I have all my audience divided down into lists. So if I decide this morning, what's going on in the digital marketing world? I can click into my list, so anyone who's following me, I add them to a list straight away and categorize them off. So it allows you to better communicate your messages out and see who's talking about, when, who's talking about what, when you want to know about it. 
Um, but if you add your, all your competitors into a list and you subscribe to that list then, so you can click in at any stage and look and see what's happening there, but if the list is turned to private, before you start adding people to it, they'll never know they've been added to it, and it's a, a quick way of following your competitors without directly following them, if that makes sense. Also, it's a great way of have a look at your competitors, or your peers, or the leaders in your industry. And um, if you click into their profiles on Twitter, and I'm t I won't talk a lot about Twitter, but I think if you, if you get Twitter right, then every other platform falls into place. So if you have a look at, your, uh, at the key people um, in your industry, and go into their profiles and look at lists there, and see what lists are they members of, and who else are members of these lists. Um, these are prime people to start targeting, because if they're in the same list as your influencers and your peers, then you know for a fact that they're going to be interested in the same kind of topics that you're going to be talking. Therefore, they're more likely to convert into an audience for you, into listeners, and they're more likely to engage in your content as well, because they already share, share that, that peak interest with you. Facebook groups, then. How many people here are members of a Facebook group? Business Facebook group. Okay, fantastic. Um, utilize these. Things like um, Women Inspire Network, Irish Biz Party group, um, I know there's an Irish Blogger group. There's a number of groups that I participate in. And it allows you to have conversations with like minded people. But it also allows you to see what are the top discussed topics um, at that moment in time for your industry. Um, so as you can get a, get a grip on the wave and make sure that you're a part of what's going on. Um, okay. Um, YouTube playlist. How many people have a YouTube account for your business? YouTube channel. Okay, I'm not too bad. How many of you um, subscribe to playlists or have created playlists? If you're uploading YouTube content onto your own YouTube channel, you should be creating your own playlists because what happens then is the minute your video is finished, it will automatically start the next video. So if you haven't created a playlist, anybody's content can appear after your video. But if you create playlists for your own content, then as soon as one of your videos finishes, the next video that starts is another one of your videos. So it allows you to get more attention for your videos and even better if you group your playlists together so a lot of it is very like-minded or, or very similar topics, so you're more likely to continue to watch your content. It's very simple, it takes two seconds. But also have a look at, if you're watching a video that somebody else has produced, have a look and see what other content is appearing in that playlist, because they're going to be very similar topics, so therefore you may find other people to connect with and subscribe to as well. How many of you have used LinkedIn search to find potential um, customers. <coughs> Not enough. Um, with me, I know that realistically, the kind of people who are most likely to buy my services um, on a professional capacity are brand managers, marketing managers, communications managers within brands. I can go on to LinkedIn and I can search for a particular industry. I might say, right, I want to check the food and beverage industry. So I can search by food and beverage industry, I can search by job title, so I can put in brand manager, I can decide, right, I only want companies that have more than 50 employers, because that's very, so that's where the money is. Um, and then I can say, right, I want um, uh, people in Ireland, and preferably if they're connected to people that I'm connected to as well. And therefore, you, that LinkedIn will spit you back a list of all the people that fit that search category, and that's a great place to start. Send them a connection request, and it is alright to send connection requests on LinkedIn to people that you don't know, provided your intentions are made clear from the very start. I would love to connect with you, would really love the opportunity to sit down and have a coffee with you sometime and maybe discuss how I may be um, able to bring some business to, um, to you, or I may be able to help you uh, attract more visitors online, etc. So provided you're being upfront, at the very start with your intentions. If they accept happy days, it goes from being a nice cold lead to a little warm lead because they know what your intentions are and they're still happy to connect with you. If they don't connect with you, no problem. You're not wasting your time chasing somebody who's not interested in talking to you from a professional point of view. Um, so, this is my motto. Anyone who has ever heard me speak at anything, you will know that by the time you walk out of here, you will have no choice but MFE will be drilled into your head. How many people here have looked at the analytics on their social media today? This week? Within the last month? Okay, that's worried. Um, I check my stats at least every two hours. At least every two hours. I know exactly who it is that I'm talking to. I know exactly the reaction that I'm getting. And that's platform, platform by platform. If you're not looking at your stats and you're not making 
measuring fucking everything, then how can you possibly know who you're talking to? And if you don't know who you're talking to, how can you possibly know what it is you need to be saying to them in order to get them to buy from you, or in order to get them to buy into what you're saying? Um, so, measure effect and everything. I'm just conscious I have about 15 minutes left to talk and one minute on the clock. Um, how about planning? What content are you going to share other than sales and promotional material? Think of the 80 20 rule. 80% of the content you're sharing should be written with the interests of your, of your audience, and only 20% about you are directly sales driven. When are you going to post, tweet, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope? Set up a content calendar. Consistency brings familiarity and familiarity drives sales. Who are you going to target and when? Measure effect and everything. Set your goals. What are you going to achieve and when? What kind of sales do you need to generate? What kind of audience or engagement numbers do you want and why what did? So if I know that I want to sell, uh, I want one new customer this month, and I know realistically that I'm going to need to have maybe 20 conversations to get that one sale. And in order to get 20 conversations, I know I'm going to need to drive my audience up by 100 new followers, so 121. Work out your metrics and then start, start um, aiming for those. Measure effect in everything. Um, share other people's content. Be positive and encouraging. If you're constantly positive and encouraging, people become more and more positive and encouraging about you and start becoming advocates for both you or your brand. Do ask for help. I'm the first person to say, thinking of going for lunch today, where should I go? Any recommendations? Um, I need to find, I don't even use Google anymore. If I'm looking for something or I want to figure something out, I, I pose the question across social media and it automatically starts engagement. And as the engagement goes, that relationship then turns into a proper two-way relationship and they're more likely to buy from you. Um, do ask people their opinion on, on things. When you're making decisions, ask an opinion. Which do you prefer, this product or this product? If we're going to run a sale next week, would you rather 10% off or would you rather an extra accessory for free? Give, give your audience the option. Listen. Listen all the time. Listen to what people are saying. If you're measuring fact and everything, you should be able to listen. Um, anyway, you should be automatically listening. Um, um, spread the joy, share people's good news and good fortune, talk about the new businesses that are happening around you, talk about the good things your customers are doing. If you're constantly seeing to be promoting your customers, your customers are far more li far less likely to ever leave you, but they're far more likely to continue to train you in the future as well. Measure effect and everything. Um, the tools you'll need, here's my top tips for this, because if there's ever one slide you're going to take a picture of this, then I'm going to slide away. Um, so the status crew, it used to be called on followers.me, it's fantastic for, for managing your Twitter audience. Um, it can show you who's recently unfollowed you, who's recently followed you, who's not following you back. Um, it allows you to set up automated messaging if you so wish. Um, but it, it keeps track of everything for you and it allows you to do it in a really, really um, easy way. The basics are free. The, the premium package, I think, is $6.99 a month. Make the investment, the best thing ever. Um, good suite for scheduling content. Uh, Twitter polls, absolutely unbelievable for engagement. Uh, people love to be able to vote. I try and run, run posts as much as I can. And the more naff, the better. Um, which solves, I have recently put up um, the question that divides you as a person. When you're eating your chips, what do you eat with them? Ketchup, garlic, mayo, curry sauce, or salt and vinegar, whatever it was. 260 people voted on that poll because it applies to everybody. Everybody has experienced that at one time or another. So if you are writing polls, try and think of things that are universal, that, that most people will experience and, and ask themselves that question at some time or other. Google Forms are fantastic for running competitions, for getting e-sign sign-ups. Um, Twitter lists, like I mentioned already. There's an app called IFTTT, which is If This Then That. So it allows you to, to set up automation that if something happens, then this will happen in return. Um, Buffer is my preferred choice for scheduling tweets rather than Hootsuite. It has better analytics in it, and we all now measure back and everything. Um, GIFs never underestimate the power of GIF. If anyone follows me, you'll know that at least every second tweet I ever use has a GIF included in it, and it gets me 10 times more engagement on a tweet with a GIF than without. Um, so never underestimate them. They allow you to share an emotion without having to explain it, uh, and they add a bit of humour to, to situations as well. Google URL tool builder if you want to use trackable um, campaign URLs to your content so it allows you to measure everything. Patience, time, imagination, and you. 
measure back and everything. Branding is key. Make sure you see what colour response today is. Consistency, personality and tone is so important. Choose a personality to start. Get into that persona every time you type anything online and make sure it's consistent. Um, and understand your genre. Um, listen, measure, monitor, test, 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 tweak and start again. As you're testing, you're measuring back and everything. Measure back and everything. Um, content then, here's my top tips for um, creating content. When it comes to creating graphics, you cannot go wrong with Canva. It's like Photoshop for dummies and it's free. Um, there's no, no excuse for, for bad images when you have Canva. <coughs> Post on my wall is like a dumber version of Canva again. Hit the chart, be for me for video soup clips and auto video blocks and iMovie. Create unique content. Um, make it, make, create your own signature when it comes to content as well. Um, get your website working for you. Make sure that you have email subscriptions there. That you clear call to actions on every single page. If you're sending people to your website, make sure that they know exactly what it is you want them to do when they land there. Is it get an instant quote? Contact me now. Is it um, sign up for a, a free consultation? Whatever it is, every single page on your website should clear call to action. Plenty of links, both back links to other sites, so to your social media and, and back again, um, internal links, so from one part of your website to another highly related to topic part of your website. Plenty of share buttons. Every single piece of content you put on your website should have social share buttons underneath, encouraging people to share it. Make sure your SEO is working for you. There's no excuse for poor websites anymore. Um, and make sure all your images and videos are optimized as well, so that way they're working for you. So not only will your website appear top of search standard search results, um, your images and your video content will appear at the top of search results by image search or video search, which again should get you extra traffic back to your website. Measure back everything again. Take a picture of that. These are more free tools that are out there. So Pingomatic for getting your blog content uh, registered. In, this is my last one, I promise. Uh, for um, for uh, registering your blogs on all the blog directories. Easy tweet about for embedding tweets into your website. Storify for gathering all the online mentions that are mentioned about you and, and embedding them onto your website. Um, Google URL tool builder, basically for short and links. Google Analytics, because you're now measuring back and everything. Um, important, con uh, important type of maker that if you're creating online content for your site, Important title maker will allow you to choose a, a title that will actually work for you. So put in whatever title you're thinking of and it will help you find the right title to direct additional traffic to your site. Uh, all talk for finding other people's content to, to share out. Obviously you're crediting it to them because you're linking it back to them. But it's great for finding the key articles that are being shared by your industry. Google Keyword Planner to make sure that you're using the right keywords across your content. And Grammarly because nobody likes bad grammar. And there's nothing more on the Measure for everything, and that's just the don'ts. Uh, don't be know it all, don't be one more, and don't be always complaining. Don't be only talking about you and what you're selling. And don't be dishonest or treat your audience as fools. The key to success on social media is complete transparency. If you mess up, hold your hands up and say that you messed up, and talk about what you're doing to rectify the situation. Measure for everything.